thanks for clicking on the video. Today I'm back in the woods with my dog. I've got a few tools with me. I've got an axe, a knife and a saw. And what I want to do is I just want to finish off the moss roof shelter. So this is a debris shelter that I've been building over the last few weeks. I've done a little bit of work to it here and then, maybe one day a week or so. And what I want to do is just finish off the door because the door at the moment, it's got holes in it. It's made up of slats or basically lots of wood that's been pinned to it. And it just needs, it just needs to be closed off. So the plan is to find a bit of material. I was going to use moss, I've had a good think about it. But there's a tree that's come down recently, it must be the last few days during a recent storm. So I think I'm going to make use of that fallen tree. Hey, come on then. Well, that is pretty much what I wanted to do today to the door. I think that should keep the hot air in, cold air out. The problem with doing this, and it's a comment that you guys have left in the comment section below, is it reduces the amount of natural sunlight or daylight that can reach the inside of the shelter. But you know what? Inside there, it's really dark anyway. So when I do camp out, I normally have this little torch on the you know, I, I pin it to the side of the wall or to the wall there and it works really well. Um, it's a very dark, there's a very thick canopy here 
and that reduces a lot of the natural daylight to reach the forest floor, especially into the shelter. So yeah, I think it's a job well done. What I want to do now is I want to cook up a little bit of food. I don't have my stove with me, I'm not camping out tonight. I've got my backpack, I've got a few supplies, so what I need to do is gather a bit of firewood, get the fire going, and prepare the food. So before we cook up a bit of food, I just want to take you on a little tour around the shelter. So if you remember from the first episode, I collected lots of fallen wood. This woodland, it's got so much wood just lying on the forest floor. Half of it's rotten, which is no good for building. Some of it has still got a bit of strength to it. So that's the wood that I've chosen to use for the structure. And then what I've done is I've collected lots of moss and I've just, I built almost like an A-frame shelter and then collected loads of branches, thrown them onto all these sticks which are going across the A-frame shelter. Then I've collected lots of moss and there's lots of moss. You can see lying around here, moss everywhere. What I do is I go along and I peel off big sheets of moss like this. And that's exactly what I've been throwing down onto the shelter in order to create a bit of a roof. Now, if we go around the front of the shelter, here's the door. And if you remember, I've put this door on hinges. The hinges are made from spruce roots. So that's there and then there on the bottom. Go around this side of the shelter and you can see, again, it's just moss everywhere. Oh, there's a small hole there. I need, I need to patch that one up real quick. You probably see it right there. Now let's go inside the shelter. So now if we go inside the shelter, you can see there's my bed right there. There's another bed, which is Amber's bed, which I made by just weaving together lots of sticks. And then there's that wooden stump that I found which turned out to be a great little table. Here comes Amber. And then because we've had a bit of a storm recently, there are holes in the roof. So it's a bit patchy in places like there, but it just needs a little bit of, hello Amber, just needs a little bit more moss to patch up those holes. But considering it took down three or four of those trees that I just saw, saw a few branches from, I'm surprised that it's in really good condition. Shelter's still here, nice solid construction. So yeah, this is pretty much it on the inside, really spacious. And then it goes there to the door. So much room here. It's been a great project, great fun to build. And I've really enjoyed those overnighters. I'll, once again, I'm gonna put a link below to the videos that will take you to the overnighters that I've been filming down here. I think I've done Okay, I think I've done about six or seven nights down here in total. But yeah, really enjoy it. Great project for anyone. And this is a project that anyone can do. It's not, almost, it's not like the Viking house or the round house where you need a few more skills, you need, you need a few more materials to build it. This you can build in a couple of days, just with family or, or your friends. Quite easy to do, a great project. And uh, once again, I'm glad that I built this. Now let's get a bit of firewood and cook up a bit of food. So what I've chosen here is a piece of hazel. This is a great non-toxic wood that's great for cooking. It's not causing the tree any damage, it's just coppicing it. It allows more sunlight to reach the bottom of the tree. It creates more shoots, more sunlight for more shoots. So um, in fact, it's probably doing the tree a lot of good by just helping it out, removing a few of these limbs. So the main section I'm gonna be using is probably gonna be this part right there, but I'm gonna cut it approximately there because I will be using a little bit of this in order to pin my meat to the stick. What I mean is I've got half a chicken with me and I've put it in a marinade. I did the marinade last night so it should be super tasty. I want to pin this half a chicken to the stick and roast it over an open fire. That's the plan.
Well, just to give it a little chance of surviving, I've replanted it right here. The ground's really moist. So it'll, there's a good chance that this will actually root and grow into another bush of, uh, well, not really a bush, but more like another tree of hazel. Well, wow, just found some wild garlic. Look, right there, really young shoots of wild garlic. And a way to positively identify it, crush it up in your fingers and then smell it. And yep, that is definitely wild garlic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a few of these leaves and I'm probably gonna add them to my meal a little bit later on. And one thing that quite often grow alongside wild garlic are these. These are called Lords and Ladies and they are toxic. You do not want to be eating those. You can see right there and then right next to it, there's all this garlic. So these are the shoots we want. Remove that mud. There's so much young wild garlic everywhere, but this is the biggest one that I've found so far. Just lots of these younger shoots just coming through. Because it's quite strong stuff, you really don't want that much. So I think that'll do.
Well, it's now time for a little bit of fire lighting. One of my favorite parts of being in the woods is being able to light fires. I always look for different materials and try and light fires in different ways. Today's method is, many of you on the channel have seen it before, but for those that are new, I wanna show you something, something slightly different. This is a fire piston. These create fire by compressing air. Now, if you're wondering how that really happens, well, when air is rapidly trapped and compressed, it heats up. In that moment of compression, the air will rise, the temperature will heat up, and what you'll end up with is a glowing ember. But you need to put a dry fibrous material in that moment of hot air in order for that tinder to ignite. The tinder I'm gonna to use today is something called charred cloth. Many of you will know what charred cloth is. It's easy to make. I've done a few videos of it in the past, but right in the end of these kits, there's a little compartment for the charred cloth. So I'm gonna remove a little bit of charred cloth and I'm now gonna stick the charred cloth into the end of this fire piston. And I'll just show you. You can see that's the charred cloth in the end and right there, that's the rubber washer. That washer, that's what really traps the air within the barrel. Bit of dirt on my hand there. What I'm now gonna do is slam this down. Remember, when air is rapidly trapped and compressed, it heats up. And there you can see that moment of hot air, that moment of compression creates a glowing ember. Now, what I'm gonna do is use something which I've just dropped it over here, hold on. Is use something to help me out with my ember. This is called a cramp ball fungus or a King Alfred's cake. This is a fungus. It grows on dead or struggling ash trees, and these are great when it comes to fire lighting, um, especially when it comes to, if you have a little bit of tinder left over, being your charred cloth, all you have to do is gently touch your glowing ember with your fungus, and look at it. These glow and burn and are really hot. So now using this, I'm gonna place it into my tinder bundle. So this is my tinder bundle right here. Remember, when I get this flame, I'm gonna drop it down. I've got all my sticks prepared. It's all about being prepared when it comes to fire lighting. The last thing you wanna do is put all the effort into it and mess up, which means you have to start from scratch. So let's crack on. I'm gonna break that in half. And I always stress, try and get more than you need when it comes to your tinder bundle. And look at this, still glowing. So I'm gonna place this into the middle of it in fact, you know what? I'm gonna use a bit more of this fungus in order to help me with my fire lighting. So I think I've probably got enough in there, but if I just break this in half, there we are, I've just broken it a bit. And if I, once again, so I've just touched this one with it, and you can see how hot and how well that burns. It burns slowly and it burns hot. So what am I gonna do with it? Well, I'm gonna stick this in with it as well because it's really gonna help me create my, my flame. Once again, I'm gonna fold it and so I'm gonna squash everything into the middle of my tinder bundle. What we'll see now is a very thin, light gray smoke. The nearer we get to the flame, the thicker, the darker, the browner, the smoke will become. And then we'll be seconds away from a flame. So let's move this out the way. And I think I'm gonna, I wanna create my fire right here because I wanna cook the chicken. And uh, so yeah, just move it out of the way. So let's crack on. You can see now that smoke's starting to change color, starting to go a little bit thicker. And we've got our flame, but it went out, no problem. We'll give it another few blows. and then we'll just roll it just to help that flame, just to fuel the flame. We'll roll it like this, so the flame goes up through our tinder bundle. We could give it a few more blows to help it. Remember, it's all about being prepared when it comes to fire lighting. I'm now gonna place this down, 
and then I've got my smaller sticks, which I like to say they're almost as thin as pencil leads. They're between a pencil and a pencil lead. So these are gonna go straight on top like this. Don't worry, it might look like I'm smothering this flame. The fire will not go out, I guarantee you that. And then once I've got those on, I'm gonna gently scatter some larger ones on the top. Again, it's not gonna go out because it's nicely scattered. All it needs now is a little bit of breeze, or if I kneel down and blow that way, it's then gonna fuel the flame and it's gonna turn it into a nice roaring fire. So yeah, once again, this is called a fire piston. It's another product that I sell. They're available on the website. These kits, they come, one end has the char cloth tinder. The other end comes with a bit of lubricant, which is the Vaseline. And that really helps out creating that seal when it comes to fire lighting. There's one more thing that these things have. I know a lot of you have seen these before. I appreciate it. But for those that haven't, have a look at this. This right here, if I can get it out, that there is a fire steel. Now, using my knife, if I strike down like this, it creates sparks. That's the plan B of the fire piston. But you know what? I stick to plan A and just use the air compression method. Okay, well, I think we can get some bigger wood on now, start prepping the food and get cooking. And there we are. The fire is well and truly under control. And then I've got some bigger logs to put on in a minute. So as I mentioned, I'm now gonna prepare my food. And I said it earlier, I've got half a chicken and I'm gonna cook it over the fire using a bit of this hazel. So I'm gonna need, I think I'm gonna need two skewers, probably about this long. So I'll just cut this. And remember this is hazel, it's green wood. Now using my knife, or I could use an ax as well. You just split down there, give it a twist. You can see it's starting to come apart. Now use the side of my hand. There we are, we split it down. Well, it didn't quite go to plan, so I'm gonna do that again. And there we are, that's exactly what we want. So to begin with, I'm just gonna remove a little bit of this bark. Make it flat first. Make it flat like this. And remove a bit of the bark. The bark can, although this is non-toxic, the bark can sometimes have a bitter taste. Or not that you eat the bark, but the bark can give your food a bit of a bitter taste. So I've done one end, just give that a little point like that. That's gonna help me when it comes to skewering the chicken. So remove more bark. And then again, just put a point on the end, although you only need one end pointed. That's one, I'm gonna do the other one. Two skewers. Now I'm gonna use the thicker end of this and I probably want just under a metre. So I'm gonna saw that off about there. And then using my knife again, I'm gonna just go in. And this time I'm gonna be using what I've sawn off as a baton. So that end's been split down. Now I just wanna put a point on this. I could use my ax, but I'm just gonna use my knife.
I'm going to split this root down in two. Again, using my knife. And I'm just going to, for the first little bit like that, you'll see I've split it. Now using my hands, I'm going to very carefully split this into two. The reason why I split it into two is because if you were to wrap this around your hand or your finger, it would snap. Well, quite often they snap, but they tend to snap less when they're split in two. So this is the same material that I used when it came to pinning the door to the shelter. And I used it as a, some sort of hinge. You see it splits down really nicely. It's a great material to work with. This is my this is one of my go-to materials when it comes to nature's cordage. When it starts to veer off on one side, you pull the other side down and it brings it back to the middle. Obviously the thinner you go, the further down this you go, the trickier it gets, but it gets to a point where you can't really split it anymore. And I'm almost at that point, but it's fine because I've got plenty of material. There we are, that's what we want. So I'm gonna use two of these. I'm gonna stick this in the, in the ground and I'm gonna bind the bottom of my stick because the last thing I wanna do is stick my chicken in and then for the bottom of the stick to pop out because it's just split. So let's just make sure we've got enough room for that chicken. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bind this right here. There's no, you don't need any, to know any knots when it comes to this. It's just a matter of wrapping it round and then tucking it in so it, it almost just locks itself in. So I've almost got to the end. And then where should we push it through? Let's loosen that up a little bit. Let's get it through there. And then just pull that tight. Bring this one up. You just keep going like this until it's nice and secure. There we are, that's nice and strong. So this is the chicken and as I said, it's got a nice marinade on it. I put a bit of a curry marinade. So this is actually a madras powder that I, I minced together with an onion and a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm gonna thread this on. Just like that, nice and easy. And then with the other bit of cordage, I'm gonna bind it on the top. Then I'm gonna to lean it towards the fire. And that's gonna cook for, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And there we are, chicken on a stick. Right, let's get it over the fire. So you're probably wondering what happened to the skewers. Well, I totally forgot to use them, so I'm gonna put them in the fire to burn. The idea with the skewers was to stop the chicken from falling around the stick. It was in order to just keep it open. But it seems to be working really well. So um, it's all about, again, it's all about preparation. I had these, if it was to have fallen, as in wrap around the stick, I could have used these, but there's absolutely no need. Cooking good in the woods. And then to go with the chicken, well, while I'm cooking, I've got a nice IPA, 5%. It's a Hatherwood, I think that's how you pronounce it. Hatherwood by the Craft Beer Company. And it's called the Green Gecko. Nice. Ah, 
drinking good in the woods. Well, this is the wild garlic that I foraged or I collected earlier. I'm going to cut it into little, little bits and I'm going to sprinkle it into my little salad right there. So it gets all mixed in with those leaves and then I can throw it into my wrap which is underneath the red pepper and the red onion once the chicken's cooked. Speaking of chicken, we're about probably about five minutes away from it being cooked. Scatter that in there. Mmm, great flavour. Bit of guacamole. <laughs> it's not for you. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you very much if you're still watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I'm going to eat this. I've got about another six to eat. I'll see you in the next video. No. Goodbye. Mmm.